There are many ways to help control hormones during menopause, including lifestyle changes, diet, and hormone replacement therapy. As a woman that cannot do hormone replacement therapy, this is how I balanced my hormones with food, and I'm gonna share that with you guys today. I'm more of a show me how to do it person than tell me how to do it person. These foods and recipes that I'm going to share have helped me with hot and cold flashes, um, anxiety, depression, allergies, joint pain, fatigue, massive migraines, brain fog, dizziness. Um, I've had so many, so many, it's hard to name everything. Anyways, I am meal prepping some uh, high protein sourdough flatbreads. Now, I'm not adding any extra flour to this recipe or sugar or anything like that because sugar seems to trigger some of the issues that I'm having. So I have tried to figure out a way to still eat some delicious bread without sugar. Fermented foods can help keep your hormones in check, which can be beneficial during menopause. So that's why I decided to make a huge sourdough buckwheat batch here. To make this, I used half uh, regular flour and half buckwheat flour to make this sourdough starter. I added two cups of soaked lentils and two cups of the starter to this mix. I added a teaspoon of salt and then mixed it until it got nicely incorporated with the sourdough. And then I added two uh, tablespoons of flax seeds into that. Freshly ground flax seeds, by the way. You don't wanna add whole flax seeds to it. It's gonna end up looking pretty thick like this, but that's okay, cause you're gonna be thinning it out with about a cup of water here soon. Okay, so I'm gonna break down how I made this. I used coconut oil, and then I used one cup of water to thin out this batter. And so after I get my pan dog greased up, I'm going to spread this out to fit the entire pan. I'm making mine large tortilla size so that I can use these for wraps. The easiest way to do this, I find, is just to use the back of my spoon to spread it out all nice and even. These take about five or six minutes to cook on, um, to cook fully. Um, in about three minutes, I flip it and then cook it for another two to three minutes on the other side. These take a bit longer than regular tortilla shells because it's sourdough. With this batch, I got six fairly large tortillas that I'm going to put in the freezer. So with this breakfast, I'm going to use a couple teaspoons of butter, three eggs, and I'm going to scramble them up in the pan. With that, I'm going to use one whole avocado with one of the tortilla shells and season it with some pepper, some nutritional yeast, some sweet chili sauce. This is one of my high protein, healthy fat breakfasts that I really enjoy. Okay, so now that they're frozen, I'm gonna see how, uh, how, how well they thaw out in the microwave. Okay. These thawed out perfect. Now I'm gonna make some high protein uh, chicken wraps with these with a homemade yogurt dressing. I'm just using some onion powder, some gram marsala, some dill, salt, pepper. Spread that on my tortilla shell, then add my chicken, onion, bean sprouts, and then top it with some peppers. I started incorporating bitter greens into my diet due to them having the phytochemicals. Leafy greens contain phytochemicals that support hormonal balance. And I've noticed that since I have been eating the bitter greens and the cruciferous vegetables that I have, I don't have as many hot flashes as I used to. 
Another way that I have lowered my sugar intake is by uh, making this no-knead bread recipe that calls for no sugar at all. It is an overnight bread and it is delicious. I will also share this recipe as well if anybody's interested. These are some of the supplements that I use um, pretty much every day, one or the other one anyway, and that's uh, collagen, flax seeds, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and um, I was using some soy milk, but I had stopped using the soy only because there's um, I can't find a soy milk that don't have any added um, any added uh, ingredients in there besides soy. So what I do is I just put all these ingredients inside of my little blender here and I kind of like either make, will make like a smoothie or I'll put, um, if I'm using oatmeal, I'll just soak them for a little while to, and then maybe warm them up or eat them cold, add some fruit to it and that will be my breakfast for the day. Some good information to know is chickpeas and lentils are considered beneficial for menopausal women because they are rich in phytoestrogens, a plant-based compounds that mimic the effects of estrogen in the body. And it can potentially help alleviate symptoms like hot flashes by providing a mild estrogenic effect as natural estrogen levels decline during menopause. Additionally, their high fiber content aids in digestion and can help manage weight fluctuations common during this time as well. With the rest of my carcass, I'm going to put it in my Instant Pot and make some very delicious bone broth out of it. I have switched to cold coffee because it contains lower acidity compared to hot coffee which can be easier on sensitive stomachs and may also provide antioxidants and phytoestrogens like lignans found in coffee beans. Since switching I can now drink coffee again. So for the last 15 minutes that I'm going to simmer my soup I'm going to add some turmeric, some bay leaves, and some herb de Provence. The turmeric is for anti-inflammatory properties. I have noticed that that helps a lot. I have meal prepped several different soups like these so that way I will have something quick that I can just pull out of the freezer and thaw out when I just don't want to think of what all is going to help me that day with my estrogen levels. I always save the carcass to make bone broth for chicken to, to add to soups because of the added nutrition. Greek yogurt is a good food for menopausal women because it's rich in nutrients that can help with bone maintenance, muscle strength, and gut health. It has protein, calcium, probiotics. The probiotics in yogurt can help create serotonin which can help regulate your mood and decrease feelings of anxiety as well. I freeze my yogurt culture in ice cube trays and then just pull out the ones that I need so that way it just, it, for one, it's more affordable because I make a lot of yogurt now and two, it's way more convenient than having to buy Greek yogurt, a little tub of Greek yogurt every time I want to make it. I'm using my dehydrator as an incubator for my yogurt but you could use an oven as well. Avocados are a nutritious food that can help with a number of symptoms of menopause, including hot flashes, dry skin, and hormonal balance. They are also low in carbs and rich in heart-healthy, anti-inflammatory, monounsaturated fats. This is one of my favorites. This next soup recipe is surprisingly so delicious. It's one of my favorites that I have been meal prepping. Incorporating more cruciferous vegetables into my diet has drastically decreased the menopausal symptoms. Cruciferous vegetables can help with menopause symptoms because they contain compounds that affect estrogen levels and may help metabolize estrogen. Some research suggests that eating more cruciferous vegetables is associated with a lower risk of experiencing menopausal symptoms. This information was pretty new to me, so 
I love soups and I decided to just make a whole bunch of soups with cruciferous veg. These are just some of the soups that I'm sharing with you guys today that has drastically helped me. I was completely debilitated by all of my menopausal symptoms from headaches, nausea, anxiety, heart palpitations. I think I've had just about every symptom known to man and it's just it was awful. Eating these foods every day, incorporating these foods, just to say every day, um, has got me out of the bed and back doing what I love to do. Salmon is a good uh, food to eat during menopause for a number of reasons. The omega-3 fatty acids, it's good for bone health, protein, it has vitamin B12 in it, and salmon is high in omega-3 fatty acids, which may help with hot flashes, night sweats, and mood swings. Omega-3s may also help reduce the risk of breast cancer and improve brain function. With the bone health, salmon is a good source of calcium, which helps rebuild bone strength and prevent osteoporosis. And then it has protein. Salmon is a great source of protein, which is important at any age. A three ounce filet of salmon contains about one third of your daily protein needs. So it is possible to manage your menopausal symptoms without the hormone replacement therapy, possibly. Um, if you would like to know more about this, please leave it in the comments below and I can make some what I eat in a day videos for those that need a little bit more inspiration. I know that there's not a lot out there because I've looked, but anyway, I want to say thank you for everyone that has stopped by and if you haven't liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps us out a lot. Thank you and have a very blessed day.